Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Good Drum Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, okay, this afternoon. Um, first things first, uh, this will be the last episode for a couple of weeks. I won't be doing one next week because uh, we've got a pitch at um, the Great Christmas Show at uh, Woolerton Park. So if you live in Nottingham um, or the surrounding areas, we'll be at uh, Woolerton Park at the, uh, at the fair. Uh, we'll be doing, um, we'll have a whiskey tasting there, so you can taste uh, four different whiskies for five quid. There'll be things to purchase, uh, bottles that you've tasted, you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, I'll be there rather than be being sat here in the study and doing an episode of the show. So um, anyway, that's, that's that. Let's talk about what we're going to be doing uh, this, this afternoon. Well, um, I thought it'd be nice to look at uh, some English whiskey yet again, as you know, I'm a big... A big fan and uh, the English distillery has got two new releases out but finally I've got some samples from the, the new Cotswold distillery. Um, now Cotswold distillery uh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Dan Saw I think Saw I think that's how you pronounce his surname. Um, <coughs> I mean I knew about the, the Cotswold distillery some some time ago I mean uh, According to um, what was in the Whiskey Magazine in October, I think it was October uh, last year's uh, um, edition, um, uh, Dan basically sort of gave up uh, working in, in in the city and decided that you know he wanted to um, make whiskey. Uh, this was while on a, a trip to Isla and he got talking to uh, Jim McEwen and Jim McEwen put him in touch with uh, Harry Coburn and uh, as he says in the magazine, I spoke to Jim on the Friday, rang Harry on the Sunday and on the Monday we were in Sweden looking at second hand distillery equipment. So, but it wasn't all quite so straightforward, he had a bit of luck. Uh, and good fortune along the way. Uh, found uh, a barn, I believe, a barn conversion that had issues with um, uh, what it was built for, I believe, uh, and um, managed to purchase that. And 14 months later, lo and behold, had a distillery. And like I said, he had some good fortune with getting hold of the stills and all this kind of stuff. He got Jim Swan involved and as Jim gets involved in everything <coughs> that's uh, to do with whiskey that's just getting off the ground and uh, had his input with regards to casks and stuff like that. And um, I met um, Alex, uh, Alex Smith um, Davis, Alex Davis, who was the distiller there at the time, I believe his name moved on, uh, at um, the World Spirits Tasting. And the distillery had started producing uh, a gin, which I don't have a sample of, but um, I knew he was telling me that they they were pretty much there and then um, starting to produce uh, a malt whiskey, and that was the plan anyway. So I kind of like said, oh, send me some samples, and I'd be like, oh, it's only been in cask for three months, you can't have a sample, and not letting it out of my sight kind of thing. Um, and it was a case of chasing it up, and I thought, well, let's chase it up again, you know. Uh, a couple of months ago and see see where, how we're getting on and um, lo and behold <laughs> I have samples which is really nice but um, anyway if you want to read more about the distillery then um, get hold of uh, the October 2014 issue number 122 of the Whiskey Magazine bit of a plug there um, <laughs> so uh, and it gives you a little bit more insight obviously they've got a website with uh, more information apparently I think the distillery lies somewhere between is it, Oxford and, um, oh, it was in my head just a second ago, but it's around that area anyway, so uh, you can find all that information out. Um, Stratford-upon-Avon, that's what I was trying to uh, uh, remember, so it's it's around, it's in that nice part of the country, and um, the pretty little distillery is as well, it has to be said, so, um, but you want to know what I'm tasting, you know, so uh, let's uh, let's introduce this afternoon's little lineup. Right to the top. I know what I got I got... Right, okay, so as I was saying, now the distillery's actually started to release uh, their spirit. They've released it in a little uh, 20CL tri-pack 
which is about 50 quid I think, uh, which you can see on the introductory picture. It's you know, all nicely packaged and what have you. And what does it in, have in, in the box, you want to know? Well, there is a sample of New Make Spirit, uh, which uh, I don't have the ABV, um, but I would guess, considering the other two are quite high, it's probably going to be somewhere in the um, 60s. And I haven't got... Uh, bear with me a second, and I will just find out what the ABV is, and I shall waffle away for a little while while I find it. It is somewhere in here, I believe. There we go. Um, this, the New Make Spirit is 63.5%. Uh, also, you will get a 20CL of this, which has spent five months in Oloroso casks. Uh, that is currently 62.4%, so hence a little jug of water. <laughs> and finally, the third uh, bottle in the little tri-pack has spent 10 months in X red wine casks and that is currently 63%. So um, that's going to be interesting, I think. It'll be nice to see how that uh, uh, is starting to shape up. And then we've got two from, like I said, two from the English distillery uh, down in, uh, in Suffolk. Um, this is the new release of Chapter 10, uh, which again is uh, Oloroso Sherry Cast Matured. Uh, limited to 650 bottles, bottled at 46%, uh, distilled in October of 2010 and bottled in September of this year, just under five years old, just over five years old, sorry, um, and this is one I've really been looking forward to trying. I'd heard rumours that they had, uh, um, uh, or, or Alex, not Alex, um, that the distillery, well, Alex on the brain, um, that David, David Fit, the distiller, had, I mean, yeah, as you know, I, when I was down there a couple of summers ago and did some filming, uh, David was playing around with all kind of, uh, of mash bills at the time. Well, now he's decided to play around with triple distillation. So, chapter 17 uh, is triple distilled, again, bottled at 46%, distilled in June of 2008, and uh, bottled in September of this year so just around about seven just seven years old so that's going to be really interesting uh, so anyway that's this afternoon's little lineup um shall we uh, start with the Cotswold distillery new mate then? Yeah. Okay, so let's see what uh, the nose gives us quite oily oh, obviously it's got the off the still kind of oily character but it's got a lovely softness, touch of sweetness, touch of sweet barley. Very, very appealing, very soft, and I'm guessing that that softness is probably down to the water. Um, quite aromatic, it's got a little bit of acacia, some slight floral notes happening, plenty of barley. It's got a richness as well, it's got an intensity. Um, yeah, that is very, very good New Make Spirit. Um, yes, it's got New Make Spirit character, that slight oiliness, but you know, it's nothing, it's certainly not like Brocladi New Make, for example, which was re really pungent, really oily, and you wouldn't want to um, uh, drink that, it has to be said. But this has got a lovely softness to it. Really, very, very nice. Ah. some alcohol. Oh, deep breath. But again, it's got some lovely softness. There's some lovely white fruit, some acacia, a little bit of barley, touch of banana possibly, a little bit, quite estery, or kind of nascent esters, should we say. Um, no real, real spices. Actually, there's a, a little bit of drying, almost almost coffee kind of ish sort of which is probably more the alcohol drying rather than any kind of character of the actual spirit but it's got a lovely softness again I mean I think this is going to going to work really nicely with a little drop of water so we shall indeed see what a little drop of water does to it let's see what the nose now see if it's opened up or given us anything new 
not really. There's a little bit of smokiness. Uh, I'm wondering whether the uh, the barley has been lightly peated, possibly. Yeah, so I'm certainly picking up a little bit of earth and a little bit of smoke. Hmm. Interesting. It's got the tang of a kind of pot still new maker, as you would expect. Um, but it's got some lovely softness, some barley. Obviously it's not complete. I mean, you know, we, we, you're getting no oat, there's no oat character uh, or anything like that, which is obvious. Um, <coughs> but I think it's got a... It's not quite the sweetest new make I've ever come across, not like uh, something like Grand Glasso, for argument's sake. Uh, but, hmm, that's really quite drinkable. Um, very, very nice. Okay, so let's move on to the five year, five month, five year old, yeah, I think they wish, um, five, five month aged spirit, uh, aged in Oloroso cast. Let's see whether those gives us any, shall we? That's very clean, I must say. No off notes whatsoever. Um, lovely combination of Colombian and dark French coffee. Dried fruits, quite, quite full. Um, struggling there for my words. Um, yes, there's a lot of sherry. Obviously, it's it's kind of in that. I'm quite surprised how evolved it is because I would have thought five months into its maturation, it would still be in um, the taking stage, or the wood would be in the the removing the impurity stage. But as we've seen from the new make, not a huge amount of oily impurities that really need to be taken out so this is obviously I think going to sort of mature quickly um, quite a lot of vanilla a lot of lot of wood obviously um, but I'm set, I'm getting a little bit of pineapple underneath a little bit of green fruit a little bit of honey mmm you know I think that is absolutely fantastic you know it all right so the, the wood is is very much dominant but but you're still getting a barley character. I'm still getting a little bit of high toned um, new make notes. But you know, I I rate this is excellent. This is excellent for five months. This is really very very good. Again, a lot of oak. More kind of in the toffee, coffee, caramel kind of axis of, uh, of flavours. But still some robust barley, some honey, some vanilla, some lovely dried fruits, a little bit of almost dried, some almost oxidising fruits. Some, there's a light floral note, there's some acacia. Lingering vanilla. Um, but again, I can feel the, the, the spirit character coming through that. I mean, it is not all kind of blanketing. It's obviously very, very young. Um, and it's got that kind of, doesn't quite have that bitterness that's coming out from the oak. Um, but it's still, you know, really quite quite powerful, quite alcoholic, but, you know, very, very impressive. It has to be said for such a, a young spirit. Let's see what a little drop of water will do. Now I'm getting more of the, 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 the spirit character, getting more of the barley, as I would have expected the oak to sort of like slightly drop off. Um, so you're kind of left with that sort of slightly gristy kind of uh, barley character. Again, slightly floral, soft, which is obviously where what the distillery character of the, of the spirit is going to be like. Um, again, there's... No, possibly a little bit. No, earth. Earth more than smoke. I was about to say I'm getting a little bit of smoke, but I'm not actually. It's more earth um, than smoke. Uh, but it's still got a, 
still got some some nice complexity. It has to be said, um, even at uh, even at this stage in its evolution. Very floral. Lots of violets. Almost kind of violet sweet. Not quite Palmer violets. If you remember Palmer violets, if you're as old as as old as I am, um, you'll remember them. Um, again, floral, soft, a little bit of honey, barley, a little bit of a metallic twang, obviously from the from the still, still, still ele uh, coming through. A little bit of dried fruit. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I really am. For for a young spirit, I think this is this is. This is going to be bloody good when it gets to three years old. Um, again, like the English, uh, or the St George's Distillery, uh, you know, I, I'm really impressed with, uh, with with their younger spirits as well. Uh, yeah, and I imagine that sort of given the the, the climactic conditions, uh, it's probably going to mature that little bit quicker. So I imagine that sort of you know, three years old is going to be going to be pretty drinkable. So um, so yeah, another lovely. Lovely whiskey, I think. Well, no, it's not a whiskey. Can't call it a whiskey because it's not three. Another lovely malt spirit. Okay, and let's take a look at uh, the third bottling in the tri pack, which has spent 10 months in red wine casks. I don't know which red wine casks, but red wine casks nevertheless. So let's see what the nose is. A lot of sweet, almost porty. Um, Cherries, currant, yeah, that's, that's a lot, a lot of wine cask. A bit of chocolate, slight floral note. I'm not getting a, a great deal of, uh, of, of spirit character, shall we say. It's a slight herbalness, very, very winey. Yeah, I mean, again, sort of lovely, lovely clean spirit. But this is definitely, which is not a surprise, all about the cask. Pal? Quite smoky. Very rye-like in that herbal intensity. Smoky black red fruits. Edgy, mm, it's kind of slightly cloying, but slightly. But obviously, the, the intense alcohol is kind of counteracting that to a certain extent. So it's, it's got a lot of potpourri kind of finish. I mean, really floral, really herbal. Probably, I don't know, maybe cabinet, ex cabinet Sauvignon cast or something, something of that kind of ilk, possibly. Um, certainly seems to kind of give me that kind of character um it's a bit like i said it's a bit kind of not treacly it's more kind of syrupy and um not yeah it's not not quite hanging together shall we say which to be fair is is not not a huge surprise at all um given that it's only 10 months old but let's see if uh, see if a bit of water will do anything to it Again, like like the previous uh, sample, um, the the oak does kind of like thankfully drop off a bit, and I'm stuck. And you're getting a little bit more of the um, kind of barley character, still quite herbal, with that sort of potpourri kind of almost soapy sort of floral kind of character. Still some warm spices, you know. It's Still, the cask is, is still obviously evident. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit soapy and potpourri kind of, that's kind of enhanced that kind of character. It's a little bit breaking up a little bit it's which is it's understandable i mean it's not integrated yet it's spent 10 months in in, in a you know in a wine cask and it's kind of 
it's really not kind of all come together yet. I mean, I'm amazed at how well together the the um, sherry matured um, spirit actually was. Um, this I don't think is quite so successful at this present moment in time. But again, clean spirit. Give it some time. That herbal character is going to kind of like uh, continue to develop, and I think that's going to be that's going to be you know, worth looking at in, uh, in 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 a few years' time. I think so. Um, so yeah, not bad at all. Okay, so let's move on to the chapter ten. Let's see what the notes gives us on this end, shall we? That is nicely balanced. Um, I mean, it comes across like refill sherry. I mean, I don't know what if it is refill sherry, but it's not. Not it doesn't appear to be a first fill Oloroso monster. I mean, you can tell from the colour for a start. Um, so I'm getting some 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 barley, some estuary fruit, some some apricot, pineapple, a little bit of honey. Uh, it's got the sherry sweetness, the slight coffee note, some herbal notes. Hmm. Really, really well balanced. Um, and again, you know, like uh, when I was tasting the chapter 15, um, which I think was about six, uh, that certainly appears to be a lot older than six years old. I mean, I would have put it in sort of about, around about eight years old. But um, as David said during the uh, the interview I had with him, you know, the, the, the climate is a lot warmer than it is in Scotland. The maturation is going to be that a little bit quicker. And this certainly doesn't seem like it's about five years old. Um, again, it seems more like about sort of eight. Really fleshy, lots of weighty fruit to this, um, which is what I love about the uh, the St George's Distillery. Mm. That's good. That's good. Palette. Right. Nice bit of banana, almost green banana on the finish, a bit of tall oak. Um, but again, lots of apricot fruit, a little bit of, of, of uh, barley, a little bit of honey. Some gentle sherry sweetness, it's certainly not sort of overpowering it, it's kind of adding that slight winey sweet character. A um, little bit of coffee. Touch drying on the finish, maybe. Um, Again, which is kind of obviously showing its its relative youth, but you know, really very very pleasant, really enjoyable, balanced. I'm getting sherry, I'm getting distillery character, and you know what more can you ask for? I mean that is just um, hmm, yeah, lovely, very very nice. Now maybe I should have done chapter seventeen before <laughs> chapter ten, considering this is obviously American oak age. It's triple distilled. It's going to be lighter, but I just thought I would save the best to last because I have tasted this already. And um, well, uh, let's 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 stick your nose in the glass, shall, shall we? I was expecting Ockentosh, and I don't know why. I mean, that was just. The kind of blueprint, I suppose, for um, triple distilled whiskies, that sort of slightly rose petal -y kind of uh, character, but it doesn't have any of that whatsoever. It is quite light, but, but very estery, and uh, I'm getting pineapple chunks, I'm getting almost kind of melon, but not quite melon. I'm getting yellow fruit, getting apricot. Really elegant. I mean, and it's certainly, I mean, it shows that the, the, the spirit is fairly big and robust and can take triple distillation. It's not kind of all gone kind of um, weak and limp-wristed, shall we say. Um, there's quite a bit of oak coming through now, a lot of creamy vanilla, which is what you'd expect um, because the, spirit, the, the character is a little bit lighter, but it's still got, got weight and depth, if that kind of makes sense. But, you know... <laughs> I hope I'm kind of getting across that it is a, a, a lighter spirit, but it's still got depth. But oh, lots of toasted oak, um, 
maybe there's one or two new or uh, brand new uh, American oak casks that have been used because it's got quite a toastiness, quite a bourbon-y um, kind of character. Really intense, lovely, lovely softness. Uh, yeah, this uh, absolutely gorgeous. It's uh, it's kind of more towards an, an Irish kind of triple distilled uh, whiskey than um, Scottish triple distilled whiskey, which, given the style of the story, is not a surprise. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I love this. Huh? Quite a lot of toffee and oak character to start off with, but the spirit comes in with a little bit of a nip to it, um, bringing some barley, some some slight acacia notes, a um, bit of white fruit, uh, apricot, a little bit of pineapple, touch of spice on the finish, just to kind of like you know liven it up a little bit. Mm. Oak kind of lingers continuously, but I don't think it ever kind of gets bent out of shape. It doesn't get out of hand. Um, the spirit still has got a lightness to it, but it's got weight still. Um, mm. That is a very, very good spirit. That's all I can say. I mean, that is lovely. I mean, it's it's got intensity. It's got sort of class. It's got softness. You know, it's just got everything that you'd, you'd want from, you know, a kind of... Lowland Irish kind of hybrid style kind of uh, malt whiskey um, and if you like either of those two kind of styles then you know again you should be trying the English whiskey because that's certainly in that style and you would obviously appreciate that and it still amazes me considering the distillery is what nearly what six seven seven odd years old and people still say oh, i didn't know there was an english distillery well you know um we can only do so much in in so far as uh, you know advertising it and uh, there's a lot of people that obviously do know that there's an english distillery and well actually more than one as we as we can clearly see um and producing some bloody good spirit it has to be said so um so yeah there you go chapter 17 Triple distilled English whiskey, mm, absolutely bloody good. Okay, so let's sum this little tasting up. Well, Cotswolds Distillery. Well, on on this evidence, I think uh, they're producing some some exceptionally good spirit. It has to be said. The new make is is pleasant. It's got no, it's got an oiliness, but it's got no huge impurities. Uh, obviously the, the stills do a good job of, uh, of removing that and it comes across quite a little bit sweet, quite pleasant, easy to drink, very soft, which like I said, I'm guessing is, is the water source. I think the, the two aged uh, examples are just interesting just to show where it's at at the moment and it's not like the fact it's going to cost you you know 50 pound to buy a bloody bottle of the stuff like some uh, Australian and American and New Zealand distilleries will charge you for the uh, you know trying their their new make stuff you know you can get all three of these for about 50 quid which I, yeah I think is bloody good and I think they show amazing promise I mean I love the sherry I mean five months in a sherry butt and it's this drinkable yeah, you know, well, you can't argue with that. I don't think that the 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 red wine matured uh, example is is there yet, and um, it's not a surprise to be bluntly honest with you. But you know, I think it's an interesting insight into the story, and I think if they keep at it, then um, the the spirit is just going to mature really nicely, and you know, I think it's going to sort of you know um, sell really well, and. It will probably approach the sort of like you know the cachet, shall we say, of uh, of the St George's Distillery. Talking of which, Chapter Ten, lovely. I, I have tasted previous editions of Chapter Ten and some of the other sherry matured stuff that they do. They've done, and I think this is probably the best one that I've tasted so far. So so hats off to David and the uh, and the guys that down at uh, in um, uh, in Suffolk, uh, in Norfolk, sorry. Um, 
you know, still doing a bloody good job. Uh, and chapter 17, triple distilled English whiskey, whatever next. I mean, you know, maybe it shouldn't work on paper, maybe it should, who knows. I mean, this again, this is one of the things I love about distilleries outside of Scotland. They can do this kind of thing, they can experiment, they can play around, you know, and again I just keep harking back to when I interviewed David and David was saying well yeah if it works then great we'll release it if it doesn't work then well we won't release it you know and um, it's they're in a lovely position to be, to be able to do that obviously if they have too many um, batches that don't work then maybe things might be said but um, by and large you know I got the impression that David kind of knew what he was doing so um, yeah that's interesting curio and, and 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 just very very enjoyable to drink. So at the end of the day, what more can you say about a whiskey than it than it's enjoyable to drink? So anyway, that's this uh, this week's episode of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Like I said, there won't be one next week. Uh, hopefully, I'll be doing one yeah you know, the week after. And uh, again, I've got sort of building up a, <laughs> a backlog of. Uh, uh, of episodes that uh, I really want to do and stuff that I want to share with you but uh, as for today that's this episode in the bag so uh, until next time good dramming and good afternoon <laughs>